Hi guys, welcome to another episode. Today we're going to discuss the cutting of barrels as a do-it-yourself at home affair. Guys want to shorten barrels at some stage. You may have a gun that you found too long or you've upgraded to a better gun and that longer gun you no longer need. Whether it's carbon or aluminium, this technique I'm going to try. I've never tried it myself. We have in-house machines for doing all of this. So I'm gonna try and do something that you guys can do at home. First off, we need a clamp. Whether it's a vise or large G clamps, we need to use some way to keep the barrel stable. If you do clamp it in a vise, it can hold a fair amount of pressure. Don't do it too tight, because that'll happen. That cracks the carbon, last thing you wanna do. To protect your carbon, all the aluminium, some of them have stickers, some of them have airbrushed patterns on them. Put an old t-shirt or rag in there first, put the barrel in position and clamp on that, but just firm enough so that it doesn't rotate. You'll obviously need to measure how much to cut, mark a position. I've never done this before, so this is all new to me. Tape the zone roughly in the middle of where you want to cut. Set your ruler position. Mark the cut location. Now, the problem hand cutting is keeping that perfectly straight. My theory is put a hose clamp on it, slide it into position. Obviously that band should give you an exact 90 degree position all the way around. We're gonna use that as the guide for the hacksaw. As long as you're cutting at the shoulder of the band, you'll cut the majority of the way through at 90 degrees to the barrel. The cutting blade we're using will be a higher tooth blade as possible, preferably 32 teeth. Similar one would be fine for aluminium as well. Carbon being full of fibers, the tape will hold the top fibers together. The problem is the internal fibers. You don't want to be knocking them inwards. So try and get the cut through and then keep cutting so that the blade is dragging upwards while you rotate. Let's see how well this goes. Obviously we can't cut where the screw section is. Let me rotate that a little. There's my mark. This is a new blade, so it cuts very well. Don't push too hard. just through the wall. Now I'm gonna slowly rotate forward, keeping the blade against the stainless steel band. Trying to cut ahead the whole time, not at the back. Rotate. It's still perfectly in line. Obviously, if it jumps, you're jumping onto the band so it won't damage. And she starts cutting. Ooh, slipped out there. I'm going to turn it around now to cut through the rail zone. 
It looks like I can just cut straight down, which will mean the blade is cutting on the inside of the tube and not on the outside. Perfectly square. For a first attempt, I think that was very good. Let's take off the band. Those clamp, jubilee clip, whatever you like to call it. Peel the tape off. Now just to clean up those edges, 220 sandpaper, very light rub. I would just take off any sharp edges on the outer edge, but I'll definitely give it more tension internally. You rather have a radius on that sharp edge, it's going to be better for the components, it won't cut in. Now, if you have a look at that, perfectly smooth and straight. Obviously, you would have had a plug in this zone that would have come out. You can press that plug out, reuse it, or there is a method to, at home, put in another plug. We do have these and we do have a video clip on how to fit those plugs. The link will be up here somewhere to that video. Exactly the same procedure I'm sure would work on an aluminium. I'm not going to demo that easy enough. So, if you don't have a vise handy, and you do have some way of clamping it, the G-clamp would work. So, now we've set up another tube. Exactly the same. This is obviously not using a vise. I've got two strong G-clamps, a block of wood to give me space for the clamp and another block of wood to keep it stable without damaging. This is a piece of an airbrushed one. This time I'm going to try and cut through almost in one hit. See what happens. Nice clean blade, cuts very well. So, now I've rotated it, let's cut right through. You could also get someone to hold on to this really tight, sit on it, as long as you jam it up nicely so things don't jump about. Now without sanding it, let's check it. There you can see, perfectly square in all planes. There's the other one pre-sanded, the other piece that I cut off. Also very square. It's not a real big difference if it's slightly out. It's more cosmetic than anything else. If you have a bit of play on one side from the other, but the sprigate of the components you're gonna put in here will keep everything in line. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. Stand by for the next.